up? I uh, sail full servo, which means I run all my my winches and steering through through the um, through electric system, and my system I was running wasn't being very reliable. So the um, the lovely Neil made me a, a a full new servo box of a slightly different design. So we were doing the final fitting and fitting and testing of, of that on dry land and now we need to find out if it works in the water yeah both the jibs the jib the main and the steering are run by 12 volt motors that are um, similar to a windscreen wiper motor and they're wired up and I actually wear a harness on either side of my neck that are operate that operate uh, rocker switches and so I steer with one hand like that and I do the sheeting with the other hand like that um, and it's, um, I've, I've often described it like PlayStation boats. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> the remote control boat when you have when you're in the, in the boat, yeah. <laughs> a lot of us um, sail um, club boats, although I personally sail my own boat. And I, the reason I sail my own boat is that because my disability is, is so different from most other disabilities that I've, I've really customised my boat within the class rules to, to suit me. I mean, it's, it's no fun sailing just against one or two people. You want as big a fleet as possible. It's, it's not about necessarily winning, it's about sailing as, as high up in a really competitive fleet as you can. Like by going to international regattas and, and regattas overseas, we can all improve our sailing skills by sailing against different people. And, and I mean, that, that includes people who do not have disabilities as well. It's an, it's an open, open fleet and it's just, yeah, it's just so awesome to, the social side of it too, just to meet a whole lot of different people. Every time you go to an international regatta, you meet different people a lot of people with disabilities are not in communas and can't afford to go to anything other than in their own country. So when you go to these ones, you meet a whole lot of different people than you've met. I mean, I, I've been like you know Holland, San Francisco, um, Australia on numerous occasions, and every time you meet such just such wonderful people. But yeah, there is a huge expense to, to putting um, you know that number of boats into a 40-foot shipping container, and. Uh, not to mention all the flights and everything. It's, sailing is not like swimming, you can't pack a set of swimming trunks in your luggage and jump on a plane. It's really hard to travel alone these days, you can't leave baggage, like normally if I had a couple of bags I would make several trips but you can't just leave a bag in an airport these days, particularly if it's been x-rayed and it's shown to be full of electronic equipment. <laughs> I've always been absolutely fascinated by like water and, and all water sports but sailing is something that you can do not quite on an even keel with everybody, but it's it's a fair it's a fairly level you know playing field. And the the wonderful thing about sailing, it's not all about physical ability; it's about mental ability too. Um, you know, tides, strategies, rules. I just love being out there and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's nice to not be in, in some ways nice to not be the current current world world title holder um, for the servo division because um, you feel like you've almost got a target on your back when you are. So. But having, having won it once already, I think uh, people will be watching me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, to, to me it's more about just sailing as well as I possibly can and making as few errors as possible and just knowing that I've actually sailed really, really well. And... Three, two, one. And when I first started sailing, I, was, I made lots of mistakes. Uh, they are getting less. <laughs> I still make some silly, silly, uh, silly decisions, but yeah. So it's it's it works for me that and, and that yeah. There's that lack of hopefully lack of mistakes and learning, and it's pretty magic that a boat can you know that I can get out and sail a boat. And, yeah. Most people with disabilities and you know are not working, and it's a real struggle for them to get to a lot of these events. And there's a lot of additional costs that other people wouldn't have just you know just to get there even. So yeah. It's, if anyone can donate anything, two dollars. <laughs> it's cool, yeah, and we really appreciate everything that everybody does to help us. So. Awesome, thank you so much, Helena, and uh, we'll be watching. Yeah, thank you very much, Sir Helen. And live sail and die. <laughs>
availability Auckland today watching the New Zealand Hansa team get ready for a training session. It's actually a real insight into watching what goes on for these guys and how difficult it is and how much time it actually takes just from rocking up into the car park, getting into their sailing gear and getting into the water. Everything takes longer and everything just costs more for these sailors. They've got a give a little page set up. They're asking for anybody who can assist financially to give them a hand to get them from Auckland to Hiroshima in Japan. If you can spare a few dollars or maybe even a couple of hundred, I know that they're gonna be really appreciative and it's gonna go a long way to getting this great Kiwi team all the way to a world championship. So please dig deep, give these guys a hand. They're great sailors, they mean it, they mean business and they're there to win. Let's help them get there.